Hello. <clears throat> Good afternoon to all of you. My name is uh, V. Madhukar, working at ZPHS Sarvapalli. In previous, uh, we discussed uh, motion, rest, uh, relative motion, distance and displacement. Further, in order to understand the difference between the distance and displacement, we have to consider some examples. For example, if a body travels from if a body travels from A to B and then back from B to A, then the displacement of the body is zero. Why? Because according to the definition of the displacement, the shortest distance between the two points in a specified direction is known as displacement. So we, we travel from A to B and then B to A. So we came to the initial position. So that's why the shortest distance is zero. So in this case, the displacement is zero. But here, the distance of the distance traveled by the body is equal to A to B plus B to A, that is 2AB. Similarly, you have to consider another, suppose a body travels from A to B, then B to C. That means let uh, the body travels 4 meters along AB and 3 meters along BC. Then distance traveled by the body is AB plus BC. That is equal to 4 plus 4 plus 3. That is equal to 7 meters. Now what is the displacement here? According to the definition of the displacement, the shortest distance between the initial point and final point in a specified direction is called displacement. So here A is the initial point, C is the final point. So the shortest distance between A and C is, this is the shortest distance. So it is a right angle triangle, so that AC is a diagonal. So that's why here see displacement is equal to AC according to the Pythagoras. What right here? Base square under root of base square plus height square. So that is equal to square root of 4 square plus 3 square. That is equal to 16 plus 9. That is equal to 25. That is equal to 5 meters. This is the displacement. This is the distance. Now, here see, suppose you have to consider another example in order to understand the displacement and the distance. Suppose a body is moving along the circumference of the circle. A body is moving along the circumference of the circle. C A, C B, D, A like that. So, if a body is moving along the circumference of the circle, after one completion of the full circle, the displacement is how much? Here, see, observe. Whenever the body moves from A to C, that is 5 meters, C to B, 5 meters, B to D, 5 meters, D to A, 5 meters. So, here, see, means the body displaces equal distances in equal intervals of time. Okay, that is not important here. The body started from A and it traveled along the circumference of the circle and finally it reached to the A. So, initial position, final, final point and initial point is same so that the displacement of the body is equal to zero. But here the distance is, see here, see, it traveled along the circumference of the circle. That's why the distance traveled by the body is equal to 
circumference of the circle. You know the circumference of the circle is equal to 2 pi r. By these three examples, we understand one important thing that is displacement cannot never be zero. Means the displacement can never be zero, but sorry, the displacement may be zero, but the distance can never be zero. Means displacement may become zero, but distance cannot become zero. That is the importance here. Now, in previous we discussed the speed. What is the speed? The distance covered by a body in unit time is called distance. But here the simple, the same the similarity is there. But here see the distance covered by a body per unit time in a specified direction. Here see specified direction is important here. But in previous as in the case of speed we do not take in the specified direction. But here the distance covered by a body per unit time in a specified direction is called velocity or in other words yesterday we already means in previous topic we discussed the distance traveled per unit time is called speed that's why here see the speed of a body in a specified direction is also called velocity so velocity is equal to what right here distance traveled in a specified direction by time taken to travel the distance or this may be taken as displacement this may be taken as display so velocity is equal to displacement by time suppose if s is the distance in a specified direction and t be the time taken to travel then velocity v is equal to what right here s by t velocity is equal to displacement by time displacement means distance traveled in a specified direction that is the s at t what is t time taken to travel so the units in si system its unit is meter per second because in si system the display the unit for displacement is meter by second that's why here meter per second in mks system its unit is kilometer per hour and also see what is here what i'm saying s is a displacement it is a vector so that the velocity is also a vector quantity where so what is the difference between the velocity and the speed yes speed is a scalar quantity velocity is a vector quantity okay further the velocity may be divided into two types uniform velocity and non uniform velocity now we have to discuss the uniform velocity what is uniform let us uniform velocity let us see suppose <clears throat> you have to consider a moving body at a such that it travels towards east or left to right in a straight line and covers the equal distance see when it travels from a to b 2 meters b to c also 2 meters c to d is also 2 meters so in order to travel from a to b it takes 1 second in order to travel from b to c it takes 1 second in order to travel from c to d it takes 1 second observe here see the distances covered by the moving body is same in equal intervals of time so we can define the uh, uniform velocity like this when a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time in a specified direction in a specified direction then the body is said to be moving with uniform velocity uniform velocity in previous also we discussed the uniform speed in that uniform speed we do not take in the specified direction the same thing it means how can you define the uniform speed when a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time then the body is said to be moving with the uniform speed but here here we consider the specified direction the same definition but extra we may take the direction here direction is very important here so when a body covers 
equal distances in equal intervals of time in a specified direction then the body is said to be moving with uniform velocity and also we have to discuss the another that is non uniform velocity non uniform velocity is also called variable velocity what is how so before defining the non uniform velocity we have to consider one example suppose you have to consider a moving body at a it covers the distance ab 10 meter it covers the distance 10 meters in 1 second in the next 1 second it covers 5 meters in next 1 second it covers 15 meters means and also the body is the a moving body is moving from a to b b to c c to d along the east direction okay now see in first second it travels a distance 10 meters in the next second it traveled 5 meters in the next second it traveled 15 meters see here time intervals are same but the displacement covered by a body is different in a specified direction so that how it means the body covers the unequal distances unequal 10 meters 5 meters 15 meters see the distances are not equal so when a body covers unequal distances in a given intervals of the time in a specified direction is called a non uniform velocity in other words also it can be defined so in order to understand the next definition of the non uniform velocity suppose you have to consider a body is moving along the circumference of the circle consider a body moving consider a moving body at a it covers the ab it covers the ab that is equal to 5 meters bc 5 meters cd 5 meters da 5 meters and also it takes when it covers when it travels from a to b it takes one second when it travel from b to c it takes one second c to d it takes one second d to a it takes one second so here see observe an important thing that is displacement distances covered by the body is same in equal intervals of the time so is it uniform motion or non uniform motion but the students may say that it may be uniform motion but here it is not uniform motion it is an example for non uniform motion why because when the body is at a the direction of the velocity is along the tangential line means along this way when the body is at b the direction of the velocity is in this way when the body is at c the direction is in this direction when the body is at d the direction may be in d so here see the direction of the velocity is changing it means the body direction is changing time to time so that in other words we can define here see the body is the body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time but what is the difference here its direction changes even though it covers the equal distances in equal intervals of time but the direction is changing so that it is an example for non uniform velocity so how can you define this with the, for this example yes when a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time but its direction changes 
then the body is said to be moving with non uniform velocity so that's why here see i gave the two definitions when a body covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time in a specified direction when or when a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time but here see its direction changes then the body is said to be moving with non uniform velocity okay the next is acceleration what is an acceleration generally when we are traveling on the road generally the velocity will be changed suppose imagine you are traveling on the bicycle on the from on the bicycle generally the road is not uniform some uneven roads will be there so when the road is clear we may speed up when the road is not clear we may slow down so by this what you understood we always change the velocity so that means changing means the change of the velocity of a moving body with the time so that's why here see what i am saying here the rate of change of velocity of a moving body with the time is called an acceleration so acceleration is equal to what rate change in velocity by time that is called displace so here see in si system its unit is meter per second because we know change in velocity that the velocity unit is meter per second here by second so that's what we what we write here meter per second square uh, in order to so i would like to before defining this i would like to give uh, we have to take an example suppose a cyclist moving through a busy road or busy street has a variable velocity why because whenever you travel through a busy street what happens sometimes we may slow down the bicycle sometimes we may speed up the bicycle why because when there is a crowd we may slow down when there is no crowd we may speed up so that's why a cyclist moving through a busy street has which velocity variable velocity when his velocity increases suppose when there is no crowd what happens generally we may increase the we may speed up the cyclist we may speed up that means velocity will increase so when the velocity increases increases then we say that he, he the cyclist is said to be accelerating conversely here see when the road when there is a crowd in the street what happens we may slow down that means the velocity is decreasing when the velocity is means here also the velocity changing here also changing means sometimes increase the velocity sometimes decrease the velocity so that's why when the velocity is decreasing then he said to be in deaccelerating or retarding or decelerating so these are same whenever the velocity decreases the acceleration may be called as deaccelerating or that acceleration also called as retardation or in other words this is also called as deceleration so and also you see generally the acceleration was denoted by a so <clears throat> when when the velocity is increases when the velocity increases the rate of change of velocity of a moving body is called positive acceleration means if the velocity increases that then the acceleration is called positive acceleration simply in ordinary sense we may say that acceleration it is denoted by a similarly when the velocity is decreasing when the velocity is decreasing the rate of change of velocity of moving body is called negative acceleration this negative acceleration is called deaccelerating or retarding or decelerating it is denoted by minus a so negative acceleration is called retardation or deaccelerating or deceleration but the unit for negative 
the the unit for retardation acceleration is same that is meter per second so here see when we generally we may call acceleration means when the velocity increases when the velocity increases we may get the acceleration that is positive acceleration when the velocity decreases we may get the acceleration that is negative acceleration that is called a retardation so this is there <coughs> here see further the acceleration is divided into uniform acceleration and non uniform acceleration what is uniform acceleration so in order to understand the uniform acceleration we have to consider one example <coughs> suppose consider a moving body at a having the velocity 2 meters per second the velocity of the body after the time interval of 1 second is 4 meters per second after 1 second 6 meters per second after 1 second 8 meters per second so when the body means uh, when the body is at a the velocity of the body is 2 meters per second after 1 second the body is present at b the velocity is 2 4 meters per second after 1 second the body is at c that is 6 meters per second at d 8 meters per second so what is the see when that body travels from a to b what is the change in the velocity 4 minus 2 that means 2 meters per second in 1 second here also 2 meters per second here also 2 meters per second that means here see the change in the velocity takes place this is the velocity this is the velocity this is the velocity what is this change in the velocity here see the change in the velocity is 2 meters per second here also the change in the velocity is 2 meters per second here also the change in the velocity is 2 meters per second but here that means when the body undergoes equal changes in velocity in equal intervals of time then the body is said to be moving with uniform acceleration similarly non uniform it is opposite to that when a body undergoes in previous we used equal changes equal changes in velocity but here in the case of variable or non uniform acceleration what do you say when a body undergoes unequal changes in velocity in equal intervals of time then the body is said to be moving with non uniform acceleration example a car moving on a busy road a car moving on a busy road has non uniform acceleration because the change in the velocity is different in different intervals of time okay now <clears throat> we may use the another word that is acceleration due to gravity often we may use because this acceleration due to gravity may comes in the chapter gravitation in ninth class so in order to understand this first of all observe this diagram here is a stone is dropped freely means we are not throwing this stone just only we dropped so whenever if you drop the stone from certain height what happens the stone will comes down and reach the ground finally why the stone when you drop the stone why the stone reaches the ground because the earth has the gravitational pull because the earth will attracts the stone so whenever when a body falls freely means without throwing without throwing freely means without just only while dropping releasing without any force when a body means whenever if you release a body without any force that is known as freely falling body when a body falls freely its velocity constantly increases with respect to time and is acted upon by a uniform acceleration so that's why here see the acceleration of a freely falling body under the action of gravity of the earth is called acceleration 
due to gravity. It is denoted by small g. Actually, the acceleration due to gravity will depend upon various factors. The acceleration due to gravity will depend upon the local conditions and also the acceleration due to gravity is a maximum at the poles of the earth. It is minimum at the equator. And also the acceleration due to gravity is maximum on the surface of the earth. If you go up from the earth, the acceleration due to gravity will decrease. If you go inside of the earth, the acceleration due to gravity will also decrease. So by this what you understood, G is maximum on the surface of the earth. If you go high altitudes or if you go depth, what happens? The acceleration due to gravity will decrease. But overall, in doing the problems, we may take the average acceleration due to gravity. That is generally, we may take 9.8 meters per second square. But in some problems, in doing some problems, sometimes we may take 10 meters per second square. It is not accurate value because it will change us it because the small g depends upon various factors we may discuss that in the chapter gravitation now so what we discussed we discussed the distance displacement speed velocity acceleration basing on these terms now we are going to discuss about the equations of motion we shall discuss that we shall derive the equations of motions tomorrow or day after tomorrow. In that, generally, the equations of motion are four types. One is V is equal to U plus AT and V square minus U square is equal to 2AS. S is equal to UT plus half AT square and the distance traveled by the body in nth second Sn is equal to u plus a into n minus half. So we may discuss or we may derive that day after tomorrow. So thank you one and all for giving this opportunity.